This is Science Module 2, Lesson 3, Water. This is the second part for this topic. Now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand how does evaporation and condensation contribute to the water cycle? What is the importance of the water cycle? What is the importance of water to life processes? And the impact of water pollution and how to conserve water. Now let's look at the water cycle, which is what you see here. Now water never runs out on Earth because of this continuous movement of water, which is what we call the water cycle, right? The heat from the sun is very important for this to happen. What happens here is that water from the water bodies like the sea or lakes, rivers, or even humans and uh, plants, animals, we give out water vapor too. So the water vapor evaporates and moves up as the air rises. Now, at this point, higher up, the temperature is colder. Right? The temperature is colder at the top and when because of that, the water vapor condenses, this is here, to form droplets of water. So the droplets of water are all over and when they come together, they form clouds as you can see here and when these clouds get too heavy which are the darker clouds these ones the water drops as rain as you can see here which is the process of precipitation drops as rain right and this rain then seeps back into the land and goes back into the sea back which will then evaporate back up and that's what you see the water cycle now let's look at the importance of the water cycle many living things depend on fresh water and this is the only natural way to refresh water water is separated from the impurities such as dirt sand and salt when it evaporates pure water rises into the sky and when water falls back down, it helps to purify the air by removing gases and chemicals from the air. It also helps to cool the air. This is why the water cycle is important. Now, let's talk about water in our human life processes. Our body weight is 75% water. If you do not know that, it's a very interesting fact. Without water, we can only survive a few days. There are some systems in our body that need water and they are the digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system. We will talk about them in detail over the next few slides. Now let's look at the digestive system. Water helps to soften the food in our mouth and what helps us do that is the saliva, right? Water helps to dissolve and digest food in the stomach. It also helps to dissolve, digest and absorb nutrients in the small intestine and it's also needed after digestion to pass out. So you see these numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, correlates to these numbers over here. So softens food in the mouth, helps to dissolve and digest food in the stomach, dissolve, digest and absorb nutrients in the small intestine and pass out after digestion. In the circulatory system, blood helps to transport nutrients and waste, materi waste materials throughout the body. And wat water is an important component of the blood. So that is why water is important in the circulatory system. Without the water, there will be no blood. Without blood, we won't be able to transport nutrients and waste materials throughout the body. And we've got water in our respiratory system, right? So, our lungs consist of air spaces. So, you see this, our lungs consist of air spaces in here. There is a layer of water around these air spaces and the exchange of gases happen in, happens in this layer of water. So, without water, we will not be able to exchange gases, or basically take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. 
Now let's look at water in plant life processes. Water is needed for a seed to germinate. Mineral salts are dissolved in the water and are transported to all parts of the plant. Water is also needed in photosynthesis for the production of food. Now, do you actually know that 70% of Earth is covered with water? You see this map here? This blue part is all water. So you can see that 70% of the Earth is covered with water. But only 1% of this is suitable for consumption, which is very, very little water. Despite that, humans are polluting the water sources and making it difficult for us to use the water. How are they polluting it? First, we have littering and dumping. Now, humans and industries are dumping waste in the water. This is a common cause of water pollution. When the waste decays, the water becomes foul smelling and contains harmful substances. At times, the waste itself is harmful, for example, chemicals, and this is not good for all living things. Another source of water pollution is oil spills. Now, oil spills into the ocean from ships can seep into freshwater sources. Oil is harmful to the living things in the water. Oil at the surface of the water prevents oxygen from getting into the water and because of this, living things cannot breathe and so they die. Birds cannot fly as oil sticks to their feathers. Now this obviously is not good and it harms the environment. Another form of water pollution is deforestation. Deforestation is a cutting down of a large number of trees. Because of this, there are no roots to hold the soil together and so the soil can be easily moved by the rain and wind into nearby water sources. Now, because of this, the water gets murky. As you can see here, the water is very murky, right? And when that happens, sunlight cannot reach the plants in the water. And so, submerged plants may die due to lack of sunlight and when these plants die, the organisms, fishes and everything else in the, in the water die too because they cannot feed on any plants. So we know the importance of water right now and so we need to learn how to conserve water. Reduce, reuse and recycle. How do we reduce? Well, when we are washing dishes, maybe we can wash the dishes in a tub of water instead of a running tap. Or we can use a pail of water to wash our car instead of using a hose. We can reuse the water that we use to wash vegetables to use it to water the plants. We can also use the water that we use to rinse the clothes to wash the toilet and recycle. Let's purify the water to be used again. In Singapore, we have new water, which is actually waste water that is being recycled and we are using it where we are consuming it in our homes. And so that is done. Uh, that is it. We are done with this topic. Again, if you do not understand any concepts, please go back, rewind, and rewatch it. I'm sure you'll be able to get it. Thank you. Bye bye.